this keeper again, um, coming to you with some exponent uh, rules. Um, today we're going to talk about the zero and negative exponent rule. So if you went ahead, went on Canvas, if you have your note catcher, make sure you have that out. Um, if you can print it, or if you can do it side by side, I know you can, you know, take the PDF, annotate as you need. So we're first going to pull up this table, and it's going to make figuring out these rules a lot easier because we get these rules again by simple patterns. Okay. So I'm going to spend a couple minutes filling out this table. So if you feel like you can fill out this table on your own and just check back in a few minutes what the table looks like when it's all filled out, go for it. Or you can just listen um, and kind of hear me explain why I'm filling out the table as it. Okay. So if you notice that when we have one to the power of x, so we're gonna be plugging in different powers and you can see that we start at five and we, all, we go all the way down to negative five, okay? You're gonna notice that one to the power of x, so anything we plug in for x, our outcome's gonna be one. And the reason being is, again, one is our base. We're repeatedly multiplying one. So if we did one to the fifth, it's going to be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is still going to give us 5. 5 times, but it's going to give us the answer of 1. Okay? And then when we get to explaining um, why the negatives is also 1 in this case, again, anything 1 to the power of something is always going to be 1. So pretty easy to think about. Okay? So we're now going to move on to the 2 to the power of x column. Okay? So I'm first going to start off with the ones that we do know already. So we know all the positive powers. So if I fill out 2 to the power of 1, right, it's going to be 2. Okay? Then we get 2 to the power of 2, which of course gives us 4. Okay? Now, for the next one, I'm just going to continue like if we're doubling. So think about um, our exponential function and how we find our answers by just multiplying by 2 each time. So I'm essentially going to be able to fill out the rest of this table doing the same thing. So 4 times 2 is giving me 8. And I know that's correct also because this pattern of times 2 each time is doubling. I also can check it by 2 to the power of 3. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again gives me 8. Okay, so you see how these are connected. And we kind of saw this when we were figuring out the rubas um, and figuring out that equation when we noticed they each were getting multiplied by 2 each time. Continuing, 8 times 2 gives me 16, and then 16 times 2 gives me 32. Okay? Now, going into the 0 and the negative. So if we continue this pattern, right, we're multiplying by 2 each time. So if you think about it, what times 2 is going to give me 2? Okay, it's going to take you hopefully less than 30 seconds. Well, 1. 1 times 2 gives me 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4, and so on. So I'm going to continue this pattern. So if you think about it again, okay, what times 2 is going to give me 1? Okay, so what plus what gives me 1? Another way you can think about it, well, we're multiplying each time upwards. Well, the pattern can also give us if we divide. But again, one half times two gives me one. All right? And the pattern continues. Okay? So what times two is going to give me one half? Gonna be one fourth. Then I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna get one eighth, one sixteenth, and one thirty second. Okay. So you might start noticing a pattern right away, but we're gonna fill out three to the power of some number x. Same thing with four and five. So this again, you can kind of begin to skip over if you can start noticing the pattern, or just figuring out what I did exactly with our two columns, right? So three to the power of one is also a three. Three to the 
power two or three times three is nine. Nine times three gives me 27. 27 times three gives me 81. And then 81 times three, I actually have to look at this so I can't do that mentally, if I could, 243. So now let's fill out the negatives again. Okay, same pattern. What times three gives me three? It's gonna be one. Okay, and we kind of talked about this already. Your zero column, when x is zero, all of them, you're gonna notice the one, and we talked about it. But when we get over to the zero power rule, we're gonna explain exactly why it is always one as well. Okay, and when we continue this pattern down into the negatives, well, what times three is gonna give me one? And I also can find out because the opposite of multiplication is division. So one divided by three gives me one third. Okay, same thing. What times three gives me one third? Or one third divided by three is gonna give me one third. Then I'm gonna get 127, one over 81, and one over 243. Two more columns, okay? We're gonna start with the positives again. So four to the power of one gives me four. Four to the power of two is gonna give me 16, because four times four is 16. Then 16 times four is 64. Then 64 times four is gonna give me 256. And then four to the power of five, other words, same thing, we're just multiplying by four, is 1,024. So then if I reverse it again, what times four gives me four? We already filled it in, one. What times four gives me one? It's gonna be one fourth. Okay, so I'm gonna keep doing One sixty-fourth, one over two hundred and fifty-six, and one over one thousand and twenty-four. All right. Last one. It's five to the power of x. Same thing. I'm going to start with the positives. So five to the power of one is five. Five to the power of two is twenty-five. 5 to the power of 3 is 125. 125 times 3, or 5 to the power of 4 is 625. And then 5 to the power of 5 is 3,125. Right. Okay, we already filled out what 5 to the power of 0 is. It's 1. Same thing as our patterns, because exponential functions, and same thing with linear, the pattern is consistent throughout the table. So that is why I am continuing that pattern of what times five. So, what times five gives me one? Well, you might have guessed it. Based on our pattern so far, it's one fifth. Then it becomes one over 25. One over 125. Then it's one over 625. And then lastly, it's one over 3,125, okay? So you just wanna take a moment, you can pause right here, double check your answers, and then raise this power of times two, because you guys saw that our pattern continued, okay? So take a moment. Have it, and it's going to be a great reference too, as well, when we move into more just simplifying and it's more practice. All right. Okay. So now we're getting into exactly why the zero power rule again is always going to be equal to one. Okay. We saw from the table that we continue that pattern of either doubling, tripling, quadrupling, or quintupling. I think I just made that up. That sounds right. Okay, we continued that pattern, and that's the reason why we got one each time. Well, if we think about it also as 
expanded with our expansion. So as we expanded, what, three to the fourth, and I should use blue for this, over three to the fourth is, okay? So if we think about it, three to the fourth is multiplying three four times, all right? Okay, same thing if we did three to the fourth, we expanded it on the bottom, we get three times three times three. What we also kind of notice from our exponent or from our uh, quotient exponent rule is that three to the fourth divided by three to the fourth, we know that is three to the fourth, four minus four, which does give us three to the power of zero, which is, and if we go back to our expanded model, three over three is what we know. Three thirds is a whole. We have another whole, another whole, another whole. So now really we just have one times one times one times one, four times on the top, right? That's what we have. Okay, really simplifies to one over one because as we saw, one times itself multiple times is always gonna give us one. So one over one, is one. It's going to be the same thing with um, variables. Similar, if we expanded x cubed over x cubed, it would be x times x times x times x on the top and the bottom. And x over x, well, it's just one, right? I have an x out of an x. So that becomes one. This becomes one. Because again, we have an x out of an x is 1. Okay? So x cubed over x cubed is going to be 1 because also of our quotient rule. So this is where this power of 0 uses two different um, skills to explain why we always get 1. So a rule for 0 of the power of anything to the power of 0. So again, I'm going to use that b for my base. So any base to the power of zero is always going to be one. Always, always, always. Okay, and again, we can see it through expansion, right? We did three to the fourth, we expanded it out, and we used this basic division, right? Three over three is one. Three over three is one. We also can prove it with our quotient rule. Because 3 to the 4th, remember, with our quotient rule, we subtract the power. 4 minus 4 gives me 3 to the power of 0, which is, if you put, type it in your calculator, is going to be 1. And we also figured out from our table. So there's three different ways why we prove 0 to the power of anything is 1. So now you know. Okay. Now moving into the negative power rule. So we're going to do the same thing where we're going to first prove it expansion-wise, and then we're also going to use the quotient rule. So I believe on your note catcher, the first thing is expansion, and then it is the quotient rule. So similar to what we did up here, I'm going to expand out 7 squared. So 7 squared is just 7 times 7. Okay, and this is a mistake, sorry. I should be using this is times, even though it's not. All right, same thing at the bottom here. Seven times seven times seven times seven times seven. All right? So if we notice, I'm actually gonna move that over a little bit because we're gonna run out of room on my makeshift whiteboard, okay? So seven to the power of two over seven to the power of five. So we have seven times seven on the top over seven times itself five times. All right, I'm gonna continue my fraction bar. Similarly to what we did up here, a seven over seven, that becomes just one, right? Another seven over seven gives me one, okay? So now if I simplify my expression, we just have one at the top because we know it's just one over one. So I have one and we also have another one at the bottom, okay? We know it's now 
times, I still have three more sevens that never reduce to one. So really, again, anything times one is itself. So this really becomes one over seven to the third power. Okay? So that's how we do the expansion. So we have one over seven thirds. We're gonna hold that for a minute before now I show you the quotient rule. Alright? So we are now gonna move on to the quotient rule. So we should still get one over seven cubed. Okay? So if I now do the quotient rule of exponents, right? We know if they are the same base, I'm going to subtract the power. So this is going to be 7 to the power of 2 minus 5, which is going to give us 7 to the power of negative 3. Well, we usually want to be able to express this in a positive exponent, and you're going to see that on your homework and all the exercises, it's going to tell you we want to rewrite them with positive exponents. Okay? Stopping right here, how else do we prove 7 to the negative 3 is actually 1 over 7 to the third? Well, if we look back to our table that I still have up, if we look at what, and we're going to use a negative 3, so if we notice, if we go to the 2 column, so 2 to the power of negative 3 gave us 1 eighth, right? So I'm going to write this, this is a little bit separate, but you can just kind of follow along. 2 to the power of negative 3 gave me 1 over 8. Okay, does anyone notice that 8 is actually 2 is 1 over 2 cubed? Okay, so let me write this. Okay, so 7 to the power of negative 3, written as just positive exponents only, is 1 over. 7 to the power of 3. Okay? And you can also simplify that even further. It's going to be 1 over 7 times 7 is 49. 49 times 7 is 8. Okay? 38, 39. Right? It's 343. Right? So really the rule, again, from our table and from our expanded as well as our quotient rule, our rule is any base, right, to the power of negative m can be written as, or is, 1 over b to the power of positive m. Okay, that is our rule. One over b to the m is our rule. Okay? And also a side note to write next to this rule, b can never be zero. So the base can never be zero. And the reason being is if we had zero to the negative m, well, I would have one over zero to the power of some number, and we know we never can divide by zero. Right? And we won't really get into why we can't divide by zero today, that's kind of more of a pre-calc, calc phase. All right, so now we're on to our try it. Okay, so we're gonna try our simplified and so there's a few. So you're more than welcome to just log off and do the exercises now that we have our two rules or you can follow along with our try it. So the try it's just more examples. And then now that we're done with zero and negative exponent rule, we're done with all the rules now. So now we're just going to get into a lots and lots of practice. Okay, so next week I'm going to also um, include an answer key video for the more complex expressions when we're starting to deal with multiple rules in one expression. Okay, so don't worry, this is not the last um, video from me. Okay, so we're going to do the try it. That's right below the negative power rule, so it's still on the second page. I just want to do the two of them really quickly before we get into the sole try it. All right, so I'm going to use purple now. Okay, 
couple in a while. All right, so our try it underneath the negative power rule, we have a as five to the power of six all over five to the power of 12. All right, so you can um, do it through expanded or just quotient. I just, one thing I was a rule now, I just like using the quotient. So I know that if I'm dividing exponents, it's really five to the power of six minus 12. And we know six minus 12 is equal to negative six. And if you notice on your triad sheet, it says expressions should only have positive exponents. So again, anything to the negative power can be written as one over that power, this power. Okay? Simple as that. So that's our answer. Then we have, okay, try it B, where I have six to the power of seven over six to the power of ten. Okay? Same thing. We are subtracting powers and the faces are the same. So seven minus ten will give me negative three. Again, if I only want to write it as a positive exponent, I'm going to say it's equal to one over six to the third power. Okay? And the reason why I'm not simplifying um, these is because right now it really doesn't matter. You can for sure simplify one over five to the power of six or one over six cubed, but it's really not necessary at this moment in time. Again, when we get into more complex expressions, they might want you to write it in simplest terms. But right now, it's fine written just like this. And of course, with any assignments we give, um, we're going to be really um, detailed in saying, hey, we want it in the most simplest form. We don't want it in exponential form if you don't have to. Uh, but for right now, it's fine there. Okay, so the last page of the try it, and then you are done listening to me for the day. There will be more videos um, as our e-learning continues on to April 30th, which I'm, you know, of course, very bummed to not see you guys, but I get to kind of use my at-home support. All right? <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna move on to the last try it. Again, it says answer should only have positive exponents. So we're gonna erase our rule Okay, and you're gonna have um, a poster next week that gives you all the rules. It's gonna be a kind of helpful cheat sheet because like I said, um, all the work that we're doing next week is just really getting uh, practice down for simplifying expressions and exponents. All right, so we're in the different triads. This is the second page and these are all mine so you all know. Okay, so we just stopped and started back in. So we have four to the power of negative five, right? So one, let me do, I'm just gonna write this all out first and just do it in a different color, okay? Then I have C to the power of seven. And again, you're more than welcome to tune out at this point or you can just keep watching for this extra. Kind of exemplify the rule again. So we know that anything to the negative power is one over that base to that power. So it's one over four to the power of five. Okay, now this next one, same thing. We just have a negative base. So now we just have one over, and again, negative two is contained in the parentheses to the power of positive four. Right, so you can notice that one over negative two to the power of four would simplify to a positive exponent. So right now, it doesn't matter because it just says our answer should have positive exponents, which it does. Okay, C is three 
three to power of seven. So I'm again over three to the power of nine. So I'm just going to subtract my powers because mine's the same base. So that gives me three to the power of negative two. Okay. And that gets simplified to one over three to the power of two. Okay. And sometimes, um, I don't want to give you a quick trick, but what I learned and kind of helped me, if I know the exponent, the power in the denominator is always bigger than the top, I know that immediately all the ones on the, in the numerator are going to cancel out and I'm left with the remainder, right? So I learned to skip this step, but for right now, since we're practicing, really just make sure this is, can be written as three to the negative power of negative two, which is one over three to the power of two. All right. Here, I don't really need to change anything. I could do the quotient rule because I would do zero minus 20, but then I'm just adding extra step. Because if I really just use what the power of zero is, I know this is just one over six to the 20, power of 20. Right, so I don't even need to include that second step. Because if you did zero to the power of 20, okay, I get zero to the power of negative 20, which again is six to the power of 20. So really, I just add an extra step, but you can again um, solve as you would like. Okay, now E. E is going back to the multipl multiplicative property. So when we have the bases times each other, remember, we add the exponents. We don't multiply because they're not a power to a power. So four to the fourth plus a negative two, which gives me a positive two, okay? Another way, again, if you can't remember the multiplicative rule of adding exponents, this is where we can now use other rules to kind of supplement. There's another way I can solve this, to also get four to the power of two, right? It's four to the power of four. And really, I can write four to the power of negative two as one times four over to the power of two. Right, again, and I get the same thing of four to the power of four over two, and I still get four to the power of two. So I solve that in two different ways. Again, either way works. All right, now for this last one, we have a negative three in the top and the bottom. Or we have a negative power in the top, but not the bottom. So what I would like to do is I would like to use the quotient rule. So because six is a coefficient on top here, and my coefficient down here is one, my coefficient is still gonna remain as six. Now I'm dealing with the n's because they're the same base. So if I'm just dealing with n to the negative three minus five, right? Because I'm subtracting the denominator power. So I get negative three minus five. So a negative minus a positive gives me a negative, so now I have n to the power of negative eight. And so remember, even though my answer is n to the power of negative eight, if you look back, it said only positive exponents. Okay, so now what I'm going to also realize that negative rule. So this is an example where we're using two different exponent rules and one expression. So that's why it's really important to take it step by step. So now I have six times one over n to the power of positive eight, because again, that rule that we discovered, anything to the power of a negative exponent gives me vice versa. So really to simplify this, this is six, excuse me, six over one. So now I have six to the power of eight is my answer. So as always, just make sure um, you reach out, email, um, we'll have Google Meets for you to face-to-face uh, -face, ask some questions. 
um, with any problems that you might have, and we also will be including answer keys as well. So um, today includes another lesson by Ms. Beeper.